So good morning. Welcome. This is a little express vinyasa. So it's about 30, 35 minutes or so of vinyasa, with a little relaxation at the end. So we're going to start in a child's pose, if that's okay. If you don't love child's pose, you can start any other way that you want. I like child's pose for two reasons. One is you kind of get to close off a little bit of your sensory information. You're not really looking at anything. <laughs> if your arms are up, you kind of block a little bit of the sound. So you get to sort of go inward. And I like the sensation of the breath in the back. Normally I experience the breath as something that involves my chest or navel. So getting to feel the breath in the back is really nice. It just has a different kind of grounding sense. So that's what I'm gonna do. But if you wanna start a different way, you can. So you can also make it a little more comfortable by putting a blanket under your knees or adding a pillow to your child's pose. Uh, all of those, <laughs> whatever way makes it nicer for you would be fun. We'll stay for a few minutes. So oh, two or three, anyway. So you can go in and out a few times if your knees need a little extra love. Give it a little wobble and then let yourself relax. And just pay attention to the breath. Spend about 30 more seconds just where we are with the breath. Alright, maybe one more breath. <laughs> then we're going to add on to this a little bit. So I'm going to take my right arm and thread it underneath my left armpit. And then you could take your left arm and go up and over. I'm going to grab the edge of my mat and use it to sort of push myself slightly more towards that shoulder. So there's less weight on my head and a little bit more rotation around the shoulder blade. It feels nice. <laughs> and then breathe. Two more breaths, and then we're going to try to take this um, right arm all the way out and put it into a spinal balance with the left leg. This might happen all in one smooth motion, <laughs> or it might be a little more um, haphazard. So 
going to put my left hand near me. I'm going to push myself up, take that right arm out, and then the left leg. And give myself a nice long stretch between those two points. Oh, and then bring them back down. Pause for a moment. You can see if you can <laughs> feel a difference between the right side and the left side. And then when you're ready, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So thread the left arm under and choose how you want to use your right arm. <laughs> and then, oh, take some nice deep breaths. Okay, so I'm going to take one more breath here, and then I'm going to try to similarly sweep my left arm and right leg out into that spinal balance. Oh, oh and then bring the limbs down. Give yourself a moment. You could do some cat shapes. Whatever seems like a nice oh, <laughs> way to kind of get in touch with or move your back around. And then when you're ready, you can take a downward facing dog pose. And then once you get to your dog, give yourself a few moments to move around shoulders, walk your heels up and down, <laughs> move your hips around, just kind of liquefy your dog. And when you've had enough of your downward facing dog, whatever that means to you, you can walk yourself into a forward bend and hang out there for a bit, or you can bring your torso kind of level with your uh, hips if that's better. And then once you get to the, for uh, the forward bend, go ahead and widen your feet out. And you can turn the toes all the way forward or slightly out. I like mine slightly out so that when I bend my knee, the knee and the toes kind of track in the same direction. So I'm going to lean over this bent leg. Then I'm going to kind of sway over towards the straighter leg then switch. So now this leg is the bent leg and I'm already here. And then I'm going to sway towards the straighter leg and then shift it to the bent position. Sway over this other way. So I'm kind of getting a little bit of a side stretch while I'm doing this. And there's also just a little stretching through the legs here. So I'm going to do this one more time on each side. I've done that an even number of times on both sides and then come up all the way to standing. When you get there, you can give yourself a nice big stretch. Okay. Now we're going to find our way into a mountain pose <laughs> after however much <laughs> Jiggling about seems like the <laughs> right amount. Kind of free yourself up. Oh, so turn your toes forward. Find your feet about hips distance apart or so. If you like them closer together, you can do it that way. Let yourself grow really tall. And I prefer the arms to just be allowed to sort of hang. I don't like to turn them. It adds more tension. But do what you think is right. <laughs> what you like best. And then we're going to take a nice big breath, reach the arms overhead, give it a big stretch to kick a chair pose. This chair pose, we're going to take this left leg, pick it up, and then we're going to step back into a high lunge, theoretically without falling down. <laughs> so 
there might be a bit of wobbling. So I'm just gonna hold this high lunge. I'm pressing my heel back, I'm pressing my knee forward, trying to keep my pelvis relatively stable. But if you wanna add a little extra action to this, you can bend your left knee towards the floor a little or a lot. Not quite touching down on the ground and then straightening it back out and do that a few times. Do it on the breath. Two more. Now I'm gonna straighten out my front leg and see, usually my left heel will not touch the ground, so I'm gonna bring that leg in a little bit closer, see if I can get my heel all the way to the floor. And then folding forward, there's a point where my hamstrings are gonna tell me to stop, so that's where I'm gonna stop. <laughs> the blocks give me a little extra stability. If you have blocks at your house, you can certainly use them. If not, hold on to furniture, yourself, the wall, whatever you got. <laughs> <laughs> if you fall, catch. Oh. So these have loosened up just a little bit so I can make my feet just wider apart. Oh. I'm taking one more breath here. Oh. All right, so we're going to add a vinyasa. So you could step forward lift up halfway, fold all the way, come all the way standing. That could be a vinyasa, that's a little half vinyasa, half salutation. Or you can step back and do more of the full salutation, a plank, lower into a position that feels right. Do a back bend that you love, come back to your dog, and then step yourself or hop yourself forward in whatever way works best for you. Ooh, come up halfway, fold, Come all the way up. Give yourself a nice big stretch. Find that mountain pose again. And just take a moment to notice is the left side different than the right. And then take a nice big breath, reach the arms overhead, big stretch. Exhale into chair. We're gonna shift the weight to the left leg. Pick up that right leg, step back into our high lunge. And again, oh. <laughs> Theoretically without falling down. <laughs> Once you're steady, you can, again, just hold, pressing the knee and the heel away from each other, or add those little knee pulses, bending at the right knee this time. Two more. Breaths or pulses, <laughs> both. And then we're gonna straighten out the front leg. Again, test out the back, and then fold forward when you get your feet the right distance apart. For me, on this side, I can get a little wider stance than on the other. So I'm pressing both feet into the floor, and I'm only going as far as I feel that stretch. Rather than bend my knee to get my torso closer, I'm leaving that leg straighter. It helps distribute the stretch over my leg rather than just pointing right at that sit bone attachment. Things get a little freer, then I can bend in a little bit more. Two more breaths. All right, so then bending the knee and taking, hey, taking ourselves back to do either the half vinyasa or the full. Oh. All righty, yogis. <laughs> So, one way or another, we're gonna get ourselves to the top of this map. <laughs> Whether you're already there, or you're making it there because you did extra push-ups or something along that line, <laughs> we're gonna find ourselves in mountain pose together. And notice, is there a difference in this mountain pose compared to the first one? Hmm. Almost always for me, they get lighter, <laughs> which is really fun. Nice big stretch, chair pose, way to the right. Now this time you can either just balance with that leg in the air or toe on the ground, bring your shin across, or put your left ankle up on top of your right thigh. I'm gonna try to hold that little chair shape. You can bring the arms down for sure. Taking one more breath. Now we're gonna take this leg, pick it up, and step ourselves back into a warrior one. So a little bit more on the diagonal, 
we're gonna turn and put that whole foot on the ground, however far you can turn your toes in and still get the foot all the way down. So then the hip is gonna be at a slightly different angle. Press the feet into the ground, give a nice big stretch. We're gonna rotate the ribs all the way forward. And for this first round, we're gonna stretch as long as you can stretch your back over this front leg. And then we're gonna roll ourselves up, trying to go one vertebrae at a time. I love to do this with my eyes closed, but it makes me a little wobbly. <laughs> so and now I'm gonna turn just to the inside. So I'm gonna go right on the inside of this thigh line stretch out nice and long and then roll myself up okay then I'm gonna rotate my ribs just so they match up with my hips so it'll be slightly more to that diagonal stretch out and then I'm gonna stay here and wrap my arms around behind my back now I'm gonna use a strap because it makes it a little easier for me to get hold and get my arms up, but you can lace your fingers together if you like. My front knee is still bent and I'm pressing the feet away from each other to keep myself steady to the degree possible. <laughs> Rotating the shoulder blades a bit closer to each other. Two more breaths. Now I'm gonna release my arms, shake them out, put the hands on the mat if you wanna step back for your full vinyasa. If you want to take the half, then we're just going to step up, come up halfway, fold, and then come all the way up. So there's a way for everyone to get what they need. And if you do the full vinyasas and you want to add some extra push-ups to your <laughs> plank or hold your plank a little longer, you can add that in. And then when we arrive in the mountain pose all together, take in a big breath. <laughs> Reach in the arms up, take in a chair pose. Weight to the left leg, maybe again, shin. Maybe the ankle comes up on top of the thigh. You might sink in a little deeper, keep it a little more shallow. Breathe. <laughs> Catch if you fall. All right, we're gonna pick this leg up and we're gonna step back into our warrior one. And so again, once I've got my feet nicely grounded, I'm gonna stretch the mat so my hips are nice and stable. We're gonna stretch out over the front leg, so going right over this front thigh, roll yourself up. Try to get one vertebrae at a time to stack. Come in slightly down the inside line here, stretching out, oh. and <laughs> rolling up. Oh. And then lining myself up, with my hips stretching out. Oh. And then I'm gonna stay here in this humble warrior and add my strap. <laughs> oh. Stretch the mat between your feet. One more big breath. Oh, and then we're gonna release the arms. Again, you can go back to plank, make it a full vinyasa, step up, make it a half vinyasa. Sometimes I alternate them. When we get to the top and we hang out with a mountain pose. When you get there, not rushing. Sometimes I like a little extra time with mountain pose. <laughs> so just, just for that reason. All right, so once you get into mountain pose, we're gonna take one more nice big lifting stretch and then coming into chair pose. Now, if we can, we're gonna just hold this chair pose as steady as possible. You can make your chair nice and deep. And then we're gonna try to twist the torso to the right. So I'm gonna keep this really shallow, just turn my ribs and put my palms together right there at my breastbone. If you like to get a little deeper, put your left elbow over your right knee, you can certainly do it that way. Watch how the hip might try to shift. See if you can keep your knees together. Oh. And holding it steady, two more breaths. 
And then we're gonna come back, bring the weight to this right leg, pick the left leg up, step ourselves into warrior two. All right, so with warrior two, I've got a bigger stance. Hips are a little more open. You can have the <laughs> arms up, palms up or palms down. We're gonna come back to reverse warrior. Keep the leg as steady as possible. Come over for a side angle stretch. So come in between those two points. Coming back, reverse, and over. Oh, side angle, pressing my feet into the mat as best I can. Coming back, and then coming over. Oh. Now I'm gonna stretch this front leg out and come into triangle. And you can do that with a variety <laughs> of methods. It's finding your way into your favorite triangle. I'm always kind of exploring, like, can I make my back a little longer? What happens if I rotate more or less? There's little tiny subtle adjustments that are nice. Oh, and then I'm gonna come out of this triangle, turn all the toes around to face the side, and then fold into a wide angle forward bend. Now, I just did stuff on one side I haven't done on the other, so I can definitely feel the difference in my back and in my legs. <laughs> um, Now I'm gonna bring my feet a little closer together. Turn the right toes all the way out to the right. You can use a block or the floor or a piece of furniture. We're gonna see if we can launch ourselves into a half moon balance. Standing on the right leg, left leg, left arm open, almost like that warrior two shape, but in the air. <laughs> and then see, let's, can we bring the left knee and the left elbow together and stretch it back out without falling? <laughs> sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes no. Stretch it out, bring it together. Stretch it out, and then you're either gonna put your foot down for your half vinyasa, or you're gonna step back for the full vinyasa and choose <laughs> the many, many options <laughs> within that. Now, again, you can walk or hop <laughs> to propel yourself up to the top of your mat. And when you get all the way to the tippy top, We'll all meet up in mountain pose. Oh, regardless of which option we chose. <laughs> so pausing for a moment, noticing the mountain pose. <sighs> nice big breath, stretch up, come into chair. Again, we're gonna hold the chair steady, but maybe with a twist. So I'm gonna turn to my left Watch that inclination of my hips to help me. Hold steady through my legs. Again, you might want the elbow to come closer to your knee. Oh. Couple more breaths. <laughs> Coming out of your twist, we're gonna put the weight on that left leg, pick the right leg up, step ourselves <laughs> into warrior two. When you get yourself steady, where it feels like your hips are in the right spot, come on back to reverse and over for your side angle. Just go back and forth. Oh, because <laughs> it's delightful. I'm gonna come back one more time. I'm gonna come over for that side angle one more time. And then I'm gonna melt that into a triangle. Again, you can come into your triangle in <laughs> whatever ways you like to come into it. One more breath, and then we're gonna turn this into the wide angle forward bend. Oh. Oh. <laughs> a 
Oh, that's one of my favorite poses. All right, wiggle your feet towards each other. Shift over to the left. We're gonna come into the half moon balance on this left leg, right, right leg in the air. And then we're gonna see if we can bring the right elbow and knee together and stretch open. Bring them toward each other at least. <laughs> stretch open, catch the balance. One more time. And then we're all gonna kind of step back. Now you can go to down dog and then just lower down onto your belly or you can throw in the whole vinyasa and then come back to your belly. But we're gonna meet up on the belly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Once you're here, roll your shoulders a few times. Oh. Press your palms into the floor. We're gonna lift into a cobra. Come back down, slide the hands back, roll the shoulders. Oh. I try to go both directions if I can with the circle. And then come to cobra. Ooh, and one more, slide the hands back, roll the shoulders. Oh. And then come to cobra. Oh. So stretching your right arm out, we're gonna roll onto the right side. Left side's up on top here. I'm gonna bend my knee, <laughs> reach in here, see if I can get hold of my right big toe. So you can use a strap or hold on somewhere else like the ankle or the shin. And then push that leg up toward the ceiling, float the left leg up and get as light as you can on that right shoulder. So we're trying to levitate almost in this triangle shape. We flipped our triangle. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's like 180 degrees, but it's close. <laughs> Taking a nice big breath. Beautiful. We're going to melt ourselves back down onto the belly. Oh, give that <laughs> a moment, maybe a cobra. Oh. And then I'm just going to roll onto my left side because I know what I'm doing, and hopefully you do too. <laughs> So we're grabbing that big toe or whatever we can reach, stretching that foot up toward the ceiling so it stretches the arm and kind of lifts us a bit. So we're in this <laughs> Vishnu's couch pose, which is basically a variation on the triangle pose. <laughs> and perhaps my favorite one right now. Now from here, we're gonna let go and roll onto our back. So I've gotta slide just a little bit over. Oh. And once onto the back, we're going to bring the knees in. First, I'm going to windshield wiper a little bit because that's my favorite. <laughs> and then bring the knees in. Now you can hold onto the ankles. You can hold onto the inner arches or the outer arches of the feet. You can hold onto your big toes, whatever <laughs> is a nice worthy place to hold on. And then you're going to try to get your sacrum in a neutral position so you feel that little low back curve still hanging out there and I like a little bit of resistance so whatever position you choose with the arms for this little happy baby you want, I like that little bit of resistance where I'm having to kind of roll a little bit into the floor with the sacrum oh, but not too much resistance <laughs> so let go when you're ready and we're just gonna take a couple of moments stretched out here to relax. So I'm gonna stick my right leg out, kind of give it a shimmy, let it rest. Same thing with the left leg. Now, what I do here is I just see, is my low back in a reasonably neutral curve? And for me, it is almost never. So I then put something under my legs, like this pillow here. Okay. So that gives me, oh, a little bit of a release in the hip flexor so my low back doesn't get pulled off the floor. Then get your shoulder blades kind of snuggled in, put your arms down where they seem like they reasonably want to go and relax through the shoulder girdle. You may find that it's easier for you to relax with your arms out like a T or up like a couple of cactus arms or even over the head, right? Grasping the wrist or the elbows. So you find the right spot for you. I like my arms to go slightly out wide, but lower. And then I try to let the shoulder roll back into the floor. 
Let's see if we can find that mountain pose posture. <laughs> Tall, neutral spine. Open upper back chest and shoulder girdle. Here on the floor. And then just let go. Your mind might tell you that there's a bunch of stuff to do, and there is, but not right now. <laughs> Embrace being still for just a couple minutes. And watch the inclination of your mind to want to pull you off into your tasks or to-do list. And let that, I mean, you can't stop that thought, but just let it hang out there. It doesn't have to be responded to. We can respond by getting even softer, even more receptive to the moment. The muscles of your face and jaw unwind. Let yourself relax right here into this presence. Blissful, open state of stillness. We're going to take a moment to notice the breath again. Feel a breath at the navel. And feel a breath at your rib cage or chest. Feel a breath right at the tips of your nostrils. And then give yourself a big stretch. Wiggle all your fingers and toes. Give your wrist and ankles a little movement in both directions. When you're ready, you can bring yourself to a seated position in whatever way seems to be the best to you. <laughs> oh. so thank you for joining me for a little express vinyasa. <laughs> Let's take a big breath together. You can do an ohm if you want to. I'm just going to do a big sigh. I hear it in my head. Namaste, everyone.